Did you know Air, now Galactica, was originally planned to feature extensive theming? The attraction was meant to place riders within an oasis with heavy emphasis on a variety of rockwork and waterfall elements. The dreaded concrete tunnel seen upon dispatch towards the lift hill was also meant to be well themed. Unfortunately, due to the development of the new ride system, the project ran over budget, resulting in the theming being scrapped. You're watching Backseat Blackout and this is Did You Know Alton Towers 2 featuring Coasterbot. Did you know? To this day, the Smiler still holds a record for most inversions on a roller coaster. The Smiler has a total of 14 inversions. Did you know? The Smiler featured a total of 8 inversions on its initial plans. In the attempt to keep the world's first aspect a secret, the ride's remaining 6 inversions were hidden through the track profiling and within the attractions building. Did you know? There were many interesting speculations about the Smiler during the construction phases. At first, many suspected the ride would be Gerstlauer's only thrill coaster at the time, the Eurofighter. Instead, the ride opened to the public to become the company's first Infinity Coaster. Furthermore, upon the release of the plans, many wondered what its world's first element would be. People speculated a washing machine element which would spin riders on the spot, breaking the inversion record, while others thought the vertical lift hill would drop riders backwards partway through the climb. As we know today, Neither of these two things happened. Did you know? A glass floor viewing section was built inside of the Smiler shop. This was originally designed to give you an overhead view of the pre-drop and barrel roll segment. Although due to poor visibility it has never technically worked and is always overlooked. Did you know? John Wardley designed the initial two drops for Wicker Man. Arguably the most exciting element of Wicker Man was designed by Wardley himself. The second drop, which acts as some kind of double down S bend hybrid, initially provides some great forces and transitions into some incredible zero G airtime. Did you know? Wickerman's wonky liftel is very unique and the only one like this to be found on a GCI. Many people have said the reason for this was due to John Wardley's alterations to the first couple of drops, however, this is not correct. After contacting John directly, he stated the reason for this was simply to avoid further excavation on the site. Many thanks to John for his reply. Did you know? An entire room based language was created for Wicker Man. Eric Jensen from LMC Design crafted a complete alphabet to complement Wicker Man's theme. The language can be found throughout the attraction, predominantly within the queue line. When deciphered, the bunting across the area reads Feed the Flames and Wicker Man. The flagpoles also read WM, which is likely an abbreviation for the name Wicker Man. As well, the wicker and wooden posts near the shop spell out fire. If you spotted any more, then let us know in the comments below. Did you know Alton Towers initially planned to construct a large scale wooden roller coaster within the Forbidden Valley section of the park? At this point, the ride station building was said to be located where the blade sits today. Unfortunately, the idea was scrapped due to the large costs of utilising the terrain and the fact that the Forbidden Valley would have to remain closed to allow for construction to take place. Did you know? Apparently Nemesis was never meant to have a zero-g roll over the station. The plans initially had a Bunny Hill style element where the zero-g roll lies today, however it wasn't until a member of a coaster club suggested that the element would work better as an inversion. Although the Bunny Hill would deliver some insane leg chopper, the Zero G roll is definitely an iconic moment in Nemesis's layout. Did you know, upon its opening day in 2010, 13 broke its theoretical capacity. Because of a well designed ride system and impressive operations, the attraction managed to exceed the theoretical 1100 riders per hour figure. Did you know, when 13 runs at maximum capacity, the drop track element cycles almost continuously? Once the train is propelled backwards after the drop, the track has just enough time to reset back into its normal upper position before the next train arrives. Did you know? Oblivion has a mirrored clone called G5 located in Jamferson Fancy World Taiwan. Strangely, unlike Oblivion, the drop and pull out are far more exposed on G5, allowing you a better perspective of how big Oblivion's 180 foot drop actually is. 
Rita also has an extended clone called Desert Race in Heidi Park, Germany. Did you know Wicker Man wasn't the park's first roller coaster to have a unique lift hill? Between 1988 and 1991, the Alton Mouse, Ava Coma Wild Mouse, operated at the park with a weird tilted lift hill. In its previous location, riders navigated a tunnel while climbing the lift, giving the illusion that they were going upside down. Did you know, Rita was named after everyone's favourite character from Coronation Street. All jokes aside, Rita actually means Alton Towers Intamin Rocket, but reversed and abbreviated. Did you know, parts of the track above Rita and Galactica are painted dark green to blend in with the tree line. To prevent annoying the neighbours, Alton Towers painted the highest parts of the layout a dark green, so they appear like the tops of trees. Also, take note of how many coasters are painted a dark colour in general here. This could also be for visibility reasons. Did you know, from 1963 until 1986, the Skyride was much more exposed and terrifying. Featuring windowless cable cars, this enabled passengers the ability to look over the edge at the ground below. Luckily, this only followed the Tower Street to Forbidden Valley route, but we can only imagine how terrifying the other route would have been. Hi oh guys, thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I just want to say a massive thanks to Harry from Coasterbot uh, for joining us on these two videos. If you haven't seen the first part, I'll pop it up in a card above, so if you're on your smartphone, desktop, tablet, whatever, uh, just click that card and you can check out the video from there. I also want to say a big thanks to all you guys and everyone who watched the last video and liked that video. Uh, we did say 200 likes for the part 2, but somehow we managed to hit a thousand likes within a week, which is insane. So, thanks so much for that, guys. As we think a thousand likes is a bit miraculous for us, to be honest, um, I think we're going for 500 likes for the next episode in this sub series. So, if you want to see more, then hit that like button and comment below which parks and which special guests you'd like to hear on our channel. So again, if you've enjoyed this video, then hit that like button, hit subscribe for more content like this, and hit the bell button to get all the notifications as soon as they come up. The top left video is the latest video on our channel. The bottom left video will be a random one selected for you. And over on the right is Coasterbot's air button, so make sure you hit that, subscribe to his channel if you like it. And again, a button for us, so subscribe to us if you enjoy our content. So thanks guys and see you next time.